Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Mental Toughness and Body Show. My name is Rob Evans, and I'm your weight loss coach, health strategist, and internationally published author, helping take your life and your business, health, fitness, mindset, and body from where you are right now to where it is that you want to be. And I am super excited, excited today because I've got a really special guest joining me all the way from Queensland, Australia. Her name is Susan McTeer Brown. She is a pain relief specialist, which is absolutely fantastic because we're all in pain at some point in our life. But what's great about what Susan does is that she does it without drugs. So she's got a great book called The Drug Free Pain Relief Book. She's the owner and operator of Good Health and Pain Relief Clinic. Susan, or Suzanne, sorry. Welcome. (laughs) Welcome to the call. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> nice to talk to you. Yeah, it's great. I mean, we haven't caught up since, gee, I was thinking it's probably 2018, maybe, that perhaps we first met. Yeah. And um, certainly with the, I mean, certainly by this stage of a year, I probably already attended about three networking events. Um, the, the big LA one that we both both have been doing the last few years. I mean, we won't be doing it again this year either. Um, but thankful for the technology that we can connect uh, like yeah, this. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Suzanne, I wanted to ask you what what gets you excited about this industry? Why did you get started in the in this industry? Oh gosh, I mean, we're all shaped by our life experiences, aren't we, Rob? Um, Originally, my career was in, in business management and, academ- and, and academia, working at universities. Okay. But um, I started to realise I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. I actually started to get symptoms coming through. I was raised with a really strong work ethic and, you know, you get in there and every day you do your best at work. Um, but in the last couple of years of my business career, I was dreading getting out of bed and going to my workplace And even though the people I was working with were lovely, all those things, I knew deep down inside I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. Yes. So I started searching. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing instead, but eventually I found natural therapies and I started doing that on the side while working at the university during the day. And I started helping people with their pain, their back pain, predominantly back, neck and shoulder pain, stress from work, all those kind of things. And um, it just became clear to me this was actually what I was supposed to be doing. So I ended up resigning from the university. People thought I was crazy because this was like over 20 years ago. Yes. And 20 years ago, people really didn't have much of an understanding of natural therapies and, and didn't put all that much faith in it. But I had seen the results already from just dabbling with what I was doing. Yes. So to leave a high paying university job and go to natural therapies was really quite Uh, (laughs) mind-blowing to a lot of my colleagues and friends but it was the best thing I ever did because I help people with their physical and and their emotional pain so it's um, pain and stress relief in many respects and uh, I just feel very privileged to be able to help people in that way and yeah so and I found also things that happened in my life with um, medical error my dad passed away when I was 21 he was only 51 in part due to medical error Um, I had a a very severe pain diagnosis at the age of 22. Um, I was diagnosed with a fast progressing severe neurological and pain disorder. Doctors couldn't help me. There was no medical error there, but they couldn't help me. Um, And so I had to step up and help myself. Yes. Um, And then just recently, my husband passed away in part due to medical error. So... (laughs) I know um, I have a respect for orthodox medicine, of course. Thank God for our doctors and, you know, all the people involved in the medical profession. They particularly shine in emergency and accident situations. But sometimes for long-term health care, um, look, errors can be made, you know. And I think um, if we have a, a system that looks at orthodox medicine as well as natural therapies, yes. I think everyone will be a lot better off. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, I think uh well, if you go to a GP, what do they tend to do? They prescribe. So if you go to a GP, chances are they're gonna give you a drug. If you go to a surgeon, what are they gonna do? Chances are they're gonna cut you because that's what they're that's what they specialize in. Yeah. Um 
so tell me the with the natural therapy so is your speciality uh bowen therapy is that yes i do advanced bowen therapy so that's like physically um correcting the body structurally so i can release tight muscles correct bad posture restore mobility um improve circulation uh improve lymphatic flow so um, get people moving and moving pain free that's kind of what i like to do so if we just think up so i only know a, a fraction about bowen therapy and I'll, I'll give you a case example with my dad in in a moment but perhaps could you explain to people because i know uh with the clients that i work with there everybody's got pain at different points in their life and they say oh who should i see and they've got some people that love chiro some that love osteo some that love myotherapists mm -hmm. some that hate physio some that like physio some that you know there's so many different treatments so where would bowen therapy fit into this and how could people kind of understand okay well maybe i should give that a try yes so it's very soundly based on anatomy and physiology it's a government accredited diploma uh, in australia and it's I guess we can do what a physio or an osteo or a chiropractor do, but we work with the body. We do it in a gentler way. So mm. there's no forcing of the body with Bowen therapy. So it's very targeted, very specific muscle release in a certain sequence. So some of these muscle releases are very similar to some acupuncture points. Um, some points are similar to trigger point therapy, but it's done in such a way a very unique and specific way that it creates massive structural change in the body. It allows the body to, to come back into balance and heal itself. I've seen some amazing things in clinic. So, so we're clear, it's physical hands on the body manipulating. Yes, it is. Yeah. And I know that, um, I don't know whether it's growing in popularity. I mean, certainly where I live here, I think there is somebody in the area that does it, but it's not that, I mean, there are, there are probably five physios or more. There's, you know, the, probably the same chiros, uh, myotherapists, uh, et cetera. Like there's a lot of those, mm -hmm. but I could probably only, if I Google, I wouldn't know who it is, but I think I could Google it and there's probably one yes. um, that, wor that works in uh, this area. But... And so people might be thinking, oh, it's just, you know, voodoo stuff that I'm not familiar with and people are scared of the unfamiliar. Mm -hmm. the, the only case study that I, I know of personally is with my dad and he, um, it's a long story, but he basically fell off a wheelie bin and broke his, fell into some rose bushes, broke his hip, pulled all the tendons out of his, out of his um, shoulder. And they were like, after months and months of, of therapy, they said, no, you need to have your hand and elbow fused. And so for those of you that don't know what that means, basically he's never gonna have any functionality. His hand's gonna be like this for the rest of his life. He's not gonna be able to move his shoulder. And so um, the only, he had all these different therapies and that was their solution the surgeons and the doctors in the end. So this is a really great example as to the doctors don't always know what's best for you. They don't always get it right. And you should always be, be prepared to question it. So it's only because of mum, my mum, um, that they found a bone therapist. And dad went from being like this to being able to reach his hand right up above his head and get back to pretty much a normal sort of life. Like he wouldn't be able to lift heavy weights above his head or anything. Uh, but the difference from that level of functionality to being fused is like North Pole and South Pole. And it was, all it was, was a decision away. So, okay, well, I'll have it fused. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's right. I mean, I think it's an Australian technique and I think as Australians, we've got these, this bad kind of general character trait but we tend to knock things that are Australian. We tend to put more value on worth on things, you know, from other countries. But as a, it's, I mean, I think we should be very proud of Bowen therapy. Tom Bowen actually came, I think, was based in Geelong in Victoria. Okay. And, and was an amazing man, helped so many people. And I think he almost put like an engineering concept to the human body. Um, you know, I had studied prior deep tissue massage before I found Bowen therapy and started training in it. And so I was used, and that's the direct opposite. You know, deep tissue is very forcible. Often your clients will bruise. Um, so, sometimes your clients are in pain in the table as you forcibly 
try and release tight muscles and realign, you know, uh, realign the body. So Bowen's at the opposite end when it's very gentle, it works with the body, but it is targeted muscle release and gets amazing results. And um, I just think he was a, it's a very clever technique. As soon as I started training in Bowen, I just knew because I'd already studied anatomy and physiology. I'd already been doing deep tissue massage on people. I instantly knew when training in Bowen the power and the cleverness of this technique. And I think, you know, also, unfortunately, government policy has let us down. You know, uh, years ago, um, I, had a pri I had private health fund rebate numbers. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, the um, Australian government recently, or in the last couple of years, um, pulled those pro provider numbers away from a lot of natural therapies. I think there was 16 natural therapies that it took private health fund rebate numbers from. Yes. And that, that was a shocking decision. That was a bad decision because we were, it's natural therapies and, you know, it's things like um, herbal medicine, and naturopathy and things like that, really valuable natural therapies were penalised and hamstrung by that government decision. And yet we are the people that keep people out of hospitals mm. and having to, I, I've lost count of how many um, clients of mine have been able to cancel their surgeries like your dad, because we've been able to restore mobility and function and, you know, and, and get them pain relief without having to go through those things. And there's nothing wrong with surgery. It has its place, but you know, not all surgeries are successful. It's like anything, there's no guarantee in anything we do in life, is there? And those just said, no, it's spot on. And those um, decisions by government to do that, um, taking away the rebates, really sends a strong message to the community that this is airy fairy type stuff. It's not a real, it's not really going to help you. So, you know, if you want to try that, then it's on your own, out of your own pocket. Yeah, I mean, which was a really bad decision because we went through reviews in order to get access yes rebates so all the natural therapies went through all the you know jumped over the you know what what the government had asked us to do um but you know health is big business now and medicine's big business yeah exactly there's a lot of players in the market and if you can help people naturally and relatively cheaply and i think a lot of nat people in natural therapies want to get to the actual cause of people's complaints you know, rather when we're not into symptom control, we're into actually physically helping people and get to the cause of what's happening, heal that, and then let that person live a wonderful life. Yes. And sometimes orthodox medicine, that's not their real, their real focus. Yes, yes. So I wanted to ask you about COVID. What, what impact are you seeing come through uh, your what, what your clinicians are seeing and what you're seeing in terms of the impact of, that COVID has had on people's bodies? Mm. Well, of course, stress um, has gone through the roof and some people post-traumatic stress. You mm. know, people have been kept apart from family and loved ones. Um, sometimes there's big distances involved. Um, fear. Fear has a big impact on people's mental and even physical health, you know? So how, how are you seeing those things show up in people's body? Like, um, is, it, is, is it tighter? Is it, is it the sore necks because they've been, you know, homeschooling, home office working, moving less? In all sorts of ways. Things like, um, gosh, it's from um, people feeling safer to be at home and not going out as much, not go, getting out into the sunshine. And getting out into a natural environment as much people aren't exercising or moving as much because sometimes they're depressed or again they don't want to catch public transport to get to their local gym or to whatever place they'd normally exercise at people aren't mixing more um, there's less socialization they're not seeing their friends as much and yes you can do it over zoom and you can ring somebody but i'm sorry that's not really the same as face-to-face -face interaction Yes. Um, you know, we can do that if we have to, but human beings thrive on a hug or, you know, um, saying hello to someone. And, and uh, yeah, and, and so, yes, things like because people are watching more TV and not as um, moving as much, a lot of lower back issues, um, people getting swelling ankles and feet because they've got poor circulation in their legs, tight neck and shoulders. Um, of course, you know, when people are always checking their mobile phones or on their laptop, yes. their head's down, puts a lot of stress. Um, the head gets very heavy. Once it's taken past vertical, even 10 degrees past the vertical, 
greatly amplifies the weight of the head on the top of the spine. And it really triggers a lot of the muscles. Um, so yes, I'm seeing a lot of those type things happening in clinic. So I think um, most people can relate to, okay, you work out, you hurt something, you know, you're injured, you've got pain or you've just strained, you know, yeah. you've just got DOMS, you know, de delayed onset of muscle soreness, you've, you're just a little bit sore or you've hurt your back, putting your shoe on or something like that. Yeah. Um, I'm curious as to the robs, you've mentioned this a couple of times uh, now, the role that you feel that stress and anxiety play in f either amplifying or creating physical pain in your body? Well, absolutely. When people are stressed, they even make poor mental decisions. Um, so when people look stressed for short periods of time, is fine. You know, it actually can help us get up. It can stimulate us to get up and do things and to achieve things. But stress over prolonged periods of time start to become quite insidious. And depending on how mentally tough somebody is, so you've got some people are very resilient and very tough and they can handle it very well. Other people, if they might have um, multiple medical conditions coming through, that added stress can be the last straw. Um, some people have got no existing medical conditions. However, the continued stress just starts to wear them down. It starts to affect their sleep. Like I said before, it affects their decisions. So rather than cooking up good food, they might go and eat more takeaway or they might go to more comfort food. And look, I'm not sitting here judgmental. I've actually been indulging in a bit of comfort food myself lately. And as I've got older, I find that, you know, the kilos pile on a little bit um, because I've had some extra stress in my life. But I know that I've got to put a stop to that. And I've, and I've started walking again and I've started cooking fresh, healthy food again. Yes. Um, but, but some people aren't aware that they need to do those things. So they tend to get in this spiral of stress, feeling tired, not sleeping, yeah. you know, go down and down and down. And sometimes some people need help to get out of that spiral. Yeah, I've, uh, spot on. I, I think you, you really need to lay down a, a solid foundation from which you can operate on a daily basis, don't you? And, that may, and, and for me, that's about quality sleep. It's about drinking plenty of um, fresh water. It's about, uh, you know, filling your body with as nutrient rich foods as often as possible throughout the day. It's doing a bit of strength work to, you know, keep your muscles strong and everything. As we get older, just functionally, this doesn't have to be creating a six pack. It's just about being functionally uh, strong. And I think when you, you have that as a foundation, then that's when life doesn't stop you, does it? Because you can, you've got the, You've got the energy, you've got everything that you need to focus on where it is that you want to place that, that focus. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, um, look, I mean, life is tough for everyone at different times and people, we all have our different things that we have to deal with, but um, at some point you've got to step up and take responsibility for your own health and your own um, happiness, your own mental wellbeing. And I think, um, Look, you know, it's hard. We're bombarded with a lot of messages. I was just watching the news this morning and there were just so many ad, food ads for the wrong type of food. They're yes. comfort food, but, you know, chocolate advertisements. I mean, I love chocolate, but, you know, I know that I can't eat that every day and still function at a high level and still achieve yeah. things that I want to do. Um, so I think we have to get a bit smarter about looking after ourselves and, and maybe... Um, choosing what we focus on and choosing what we expose ourselves to rather than just kind of being there and just letting everything come out. You know? Yeah. I think uh, one of the things that, that I notice is with um, pretty much every single person, I go through all of my clients and every single person has got some ailment or pain or ache. It could be just something they've got this week. It could be something they've had for a long time. Uh, but I think we get to a place, certainly as we get old, different if it's a child, but as we get older, we just seem to put up with the fact that pain is normal. Yes. And even though some pain can be good in certain areas of our life, that, that pain that we know shouldn't be there all the time shouldn't be there all the time. Yes. <laughs> and I work with people uh, that, say, have um, really bad knees, for instance, and it's about the 
um, strengthening the muscles around the knee to take some of the pressure off the knees. And sometimes weight loss is part of that journey as well. Uh, and they can, they can become almost pain-free. Sometimes they're always going to have some pain, but sometimes they'll be completely pain-free and they just didn't know what they didn't know. And so I'm just wondering what words of advice you would have for people that are listening right now and they're thinking, yeah, I've always had this shoulder thing, but, you know, oh, it's from when I used to play baseball or tennis or whatever, and I'm just putting up with it. What do you say to those people to get them to take some action? Look, I mean, there's been times in my life where I've hated pain. When I was 22 and, and, ba and battling that pain disorder, um, it was excruciating. Pain relief medications just didn't work for me. I've got one of those metabolisms that it just, no pain relief works for me. So I'm very stimulated. If I've got pain, I'm stimulated to quickly address it, to look at the cause and get rid of it. So I think the thing to remember is that pain is a warning signal. That is why it was it's devised. Yeah. You know, it's telling us that something needs to change. Um, so yes, I, I know what you're saying, Rob. A lot of people get used to being in pain. It starts to become normalized in their environment. But um, for most people, and in most cases, it does not have to be a normal state of being. But what you do is you use that pain. You use that pain to... Um, to prompt you into action. You know, if, you, if you're going to get emotional about pain, get angry <laughs> and yeah. use that anger to stir you up and get you motivated and get you moving. Yeah. Um, and, and look, everyone's different. So, I mean, my clients love the advanced bone therapy that I do. And then I also do mental um, strengthening and, and mindset work with them as well. Um, but someone else will love their chiropractor or their physio or, you know, so, you know, Go to whichever physical type therapy works for you. But I'd say to people, if you're in pain, don't give up. Yeah. You know, if I'd given up 22 when I was 22, I would not. I was given less than a year to live. If I'd given up back then, well, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. So it's only because I was so determined, or some people call it stubborn. Um, but you know, I fought to get through my pain situation, and I manage my pain levels now because, as I said before, pain relief medication doesn't work for me. So yeah. I've always got to be preventative and preemptive. But that's fine. That's worked really great for me so far. So it can be done. And I'm not special. I mean, gosh. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah, some really great points there. I think the thing that I've learned through just through my own body is uh, it doesn't have to be normal. Yes. I, and you, you've hit it right on the nail there when you've said... Uh, you know, the pain is our body sending us a signal that something is not right and we shouldn't ignore it. And it doesn't mean that you have to put up with it. And just, but well, I keep saying uh, people don't know what they don't know. But for instance, if you have chronic pain in your knees and you know that if we can strengthen those muscles, your quadriceps, your hamstrings, your calves around the knee joint, then we can dramatically reduce the pain and maybe even eliminate it. And that's no medication or anything. It's just doing that. And you can feel that. Then you're like, oh, I had no idea that I could do that. Yeah. I know for myself, with um, I've had three shoulder surgeries. Now, I was told that they always go the path of least resistance, you know. So you go through um, the different therapies um, to see, okay, is massage just if I just strain something, whatever, um, you know, you back off training, you start up again, after a while it starts to hurt again. Uh, it wasn't until my surgeon showed me photos with the camera on the end of his little tool, looking at the tendons in my shoulder and everything in the bones that he could actually show me what the problem was. And no amount of therapy was ever going to fix that because if you've got bone on bone and you've got like a um, like a bony spur that's pointing into your bursa that every time you do this is rubbing up and down and that's never going to disappear unless you take the spur away, then how's that ever going to be fixed? Um, so, you know, my point was I, I just kept escalating. It started with the GP, then it went to a physio, then it went to a sports doctor, then it went to a cortisone injection, then it went to back to the sports doctor, then it went to the surgeon, then he said, that's the problem. Um, so sometimes you, you just don't know, but I was told from a early on, it was a, um, an ultrasound and they said, you've got 
um, tendinosis. And they said, if you continue to lift heavy weights, you could tear that and then you'll require surgery. Mm -hmm. So immediately I'm like, oh man, I can't train proper anymore. It's going to stop me. And that was devs like it was a bigger hit to my my mindset and what it means to me than the, the actual injury, uh, but it, it was not accurate. Yeah, well, that's the thing. That's what they say. You know, you get a medical opinion. You know, you 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 can go to several different doctors and get sort of different opinions or diagnoses from that doctor. So you know, working with people and people's health is not always an exact science. No. But, you know, like when you're talking about your shoulder surgery, and I work with a lot of athletes in clinic, when they get injuries like they do their knee or their shoulder, sometimes there's a structural imbalance there too that's feeding into that. So it may have come on gradually. You know, they might have had an, an injury that wasn't treated at the time or maybe it's the way they're lifting their weights. Sometimes it can create a structural imbalance. So I've always found that when I correct them structurally in clinic, then they can go back and they're more effective in their training. They don't get injured during their training. Um, and it's like, to me, it's kind of a mutual thing. So as a Bowen therapist, I will get someone corrected structurally and then I'll say, okay, you need to go see a good physical trainer, a good PT, and get someone to show you what exercises now you can do to strengthen yourself now that everything is balanced. I mean, I know some people go to PTs and they struggle to do some exercises. And sometimes that's because their hip, you know, the pelvic girdle is tilting and rotating and they're getting yeah. back pain. You know, and you talk about knee joints. I mean, um, you talk about strengthening those muscles, which is a really good thing to do. But also sometimes those muscles are tight and contracted. And if, if they go and see, see me for an advanced bone therapy, we can get those muscles sorted out. And then your exercises that you give your client work absolutely amazing. So I think there's a, there's a synergy as well. Um, so I would say to people, if something's not working, don't feel bad about it. Don't criticise that practitioner that's been trying to help you. Just say, okay, that's not working for me at the moment. It might work another time, but I'm going to try something else. And just keep trying something else until you find what works for you. I think uh, seeing you as part of, uh, you know, your team is really important because, uh, most people will go to see someone like you when they're in pain yes. and they think, okay, well, I've had a session, I'm fixed now, I don't have to see you again. But I think if you change your thinking around that and they see you as part of their team and helping support them, I mean, athletes get this because of their, their high performance and everything and they need to have the right people and regular massage and therapy and stuff to keep all their muscles working yeah. uh, nicely. But there's no reason why the general public shouldn't be doing that as well and seeing the you know you your therapy as just part of their lifestyle um just just like having a, a coach i think is really really important and it's something that it probably took me 20 years to realize in myself yes. um, so i thought i was young and fit and okay i'd get the odd sore muscle every now and then but i'd have a bath and soak it out and you know just get back into it but that I mean you learn as you go along in life don't you and th like I say I'm learning through my own body as to what works and as I'm getting older that I don't recover as fast yeah. and sleep is a super super important part of recovering from injury anything that I'm also taken for granted in the past yeah. well you know with sleep Rob um, if your body is structurally out of alignment it's going to cause you to toss and turn and be uncomfortable in bed at night yeah. So if you're structurally misaligned, it's going to affect your sleep patterns. So that's why when often I'll see people in clinic and we get them all balanced out, then they'll go home and they'll sleep really wonderfully, yeah. you know, the next couple of weeks, you know. Um, so, yeah, so it has, it has a really big impact. Yeah. A couple of other things I wanted to ask you uh, before we finish up. One is about homework. And that is I, I'm sure that when you see somebody, you send them home with some homework. You know, you've got, you've got to do this but between now and when I see you next. Yes. I see so many people that they said, oh, yeah, this happened years ago. And I said, did you do your homework? And so what do you mean? I said, did you do your exercises that you were prescribed? And I said, oh, no, nah, not really. I said, well, how did you expect it to just get better? 
Yeah. And I think if people walk out of the door from you and feel, oh, I feel better, okay, I don't need to go back. But that's only the start of it, isn't it? So tell me, how important is it? Let's get the message to people. Oh, look, it's very important. You know, so um, so for certain, like for lower back pain or knee pain, like hamstring issues, I do give exercises to my clients and expect them to do it. Honestly, I don't know how many, <laughs> what percentage of them actually do do it. The motivated, the smart ones do because they know it's in their best interest. Yeah. It's important to do that homework. And then it's also important to look after your body in other ways. Keep moving. I mean, I always think there's that principle, isn't there, in, in um, Chinese medicine that stagnation is death. So, uh, and we see it in nature where if you have a stagnant pool of water, it loses oxygen, the fish start floating on the surface, they die. It's the same with our bodies. We've got to keep moving our bodies. Stagnation yeah. affects our circulation. We can lose limbs from having stagnant circulation. So you've got to keep moving as well as doing your exercise. I say to all my clients, you've got to drink good quality water, make sure you're hydrated, and you've got to eat live, fresh food. You can't exist on takeaway or cooked and processed food all the time. You've got to have some live energy food in, in your diet as well. Um, but the other Tell thing is... Tell us a little bit about that because people I can imagine are thinking, oh, gee, I've got to eat live fish, I've got to eat live animals and, and stuff. So what are you talking about? I'm, I'm, really, I'm, probably, I'm really talking about um, vegetables, so greens, you know, salads. More, we need more salads in our life. I've, I've seen this trend in clinic because, you know, I've had my clinic for over 20 years now and... People in the past used to cook more of their food and seem to eat better than the young ones coming through now. So I'm seeing yeah. um, in Rockhampton, you know, I have people coming in from the mines and from properties and farms and things like that. And like, for example, the guys, the young guys that work in the mines, they'll be under 30, but they'll be taking two litres bottles of Coke into the, if they're driving their trucks around the mine. And they'll say, oh, well, I go through two or three two litre bottles of Coke each day. I just yeah. about faint. <laughs> what? Um, but you can actually feel it when I put so as a physical therapist when I place my hands on someone I can feel if that part of the body is congested whether it's hydrated I can feel whether the muscles uh, have good muscle tone in them or not so there's a lot of extra information I get when I put my hands on somebody and I have to say those young fellows that are drinking coke all day uh, I've heard these jokes they say oh fish pee in water why would I want to drink water and I said, we well, want to drink water because your body needs it. Your body functions need it. Um, but I place my hand on it. It's like work, working on a brick wall. Yeah. They're so congested and tough. And they're not realising that it affects their circulation, the way their body absorbs and uses nutrients. So it's so critically important. And as a young person, um, you have to look after those things too. You know, Your youth will only last and get you out of those situations for a certain amount of time. That's right. I, I see it through my clients that it tends to, well, if I put it as bluntly as this, you can abuse your body for about, it seems to be about 30 years before it starts to show up some way in, in a way that you really don't like. And whether that's a cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, prostate issues, uh, you know, whatever, uh, but it, it can be really, really damaging. So um, yeah, I, I hear you. Um, I wanted to ask you about this aspect. So obviously people think about therapy and we've spoken about hands-on therapy here. Um, so that can obviously limit people's thinking, oh, there's no one near me or, you know, whatever. Um, so what are, the, what are the services and maybe COVID's helped you with this and certainly helped me open up my services that, that I provide now with COVID and it's because we've had to think differently um, you mentioned about uh, working with um, emotional health, anxiety, stress, and so forth. But uh, tell us about the types of therapies and the services that you can provide where anywhere that's got a Wi-Fi connection. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as well as doing the physical therapies in clinic, yes, COVID, I mean, it was a shock when the government closed down business for those months last year. And all of a sudden I couldn't access my clients and, you know, they wanted to see me and I wanted to help them. So it's made me realise, so um, I'm shifting to online services now. So I'm a master hypnotherapist and I'm also a master timeline therapist. Now, timeline therapy is relatively new for a lot of people, but it is brilliant for working with um, trauma, 
um, negative beliefs. So people are dealing with anger, fear, sadness, um, despair, uh, grief. Um, you, you can actually be helped. You don't have to suffer at home alone with those kind of things. So I can actually work with people, as you say, online or via the telephone. If internet is not the best, we can work around that. And uh, so I love doing like personal breakthrough sessions with people. And it's amazing. It's where the mind goes, the body follows. So yeah. once we clear up the mindset and get you thinking more clearly, letting go of those emotional chains that have been holding you back, uh, once we get rid of the rubbish that's been clouding your thinking, you get mental clarity, you get your energy back, and your body starts to follow those improvements as well. So there's things definitely we can do, even if you can't physically get to in to see me in clinic. Yeah, um, beautifully said. I, one of the, the things that I've certainly worked out in my life, I mean, you and I both know the value of having coaches across uh, you know, multiple areas of our life, but I like to think about if I'm in the centre here, it's about who's my team around me? And that could be, uh, you know, whether it's your, your family, intimate partner, but then beyond those, it's your, it's your friendships, it's your, um, it's your coaches, it's your allied health professionals like yourself. It's making sure that you've got the right people around you. But I, I also include things like my solicitors, my, um, uh, you know, my financial planning people, all of those. So making sure that you're surrounding yourself with this, um, you know, tightly structured, um, family of experts that it doesn't matter what goes on in your life, you've got that person to go to. Your GP is another one. I mean, you, you need to have a good relationship with the GP uh, as well. So I think you form a really pivotal role in that for people. I would just like people to hear from this today is that you, you need to have someone like Suzanne in your, in your corner as part of your team uh, because I wrote down here, um, you just aren't alone. And often pain can make us feel alone and fear, those things you mentioned before, fear, anxiety, stress, and COVID is bringing up all sorts of new things for, for people every time we go into another lockdown. And I'm sure, like I'm in Melbourne, uh, we were shut down for eight, eight months last year in total. Um, I'm sure we'll be locked down at, at least another once or twice this year at some point. Um, and each time that happens, it creates a heightened level of anxiety and stress and uncertainty for people. That's right. Um, and that's where it could be just a, a phone, you could be just a phone call away. Absolutely. And the way we survive through these times is through mental toughness and, and strengthening our mindset so that when those things happen, I mean, things are always gonna happen in our life that external things that we don't have control over. So it becomes very important that we become very mentally strong so we can focus on the, posit on the positive and pivot and look for the positive things out of any situation. So we still thrive and we still keep moving forward. Yeah, and never give up. You're exactly right. Never uh, just never give up. As painful as it might be, you just can't ever give up. We've got one shot at this thing called life and we've got to, I want to go through it as pain-free and functionally strong and focused and energised as possible to get the most out of it. Absolutely. I mean, time is precious. I mean, I lost my husband a couple of years ago. And, yeah, so sorry uh, about that. Yeah, thank you, Rob. I mean, it was devastating. It was like I'd been kicked in the head, the heart and the gut all at the one time. It took a while to get over that. But it's just made me realise that people are the most precious thing in this life. It doesn't matter about things. It's people. So whether it's – and it's not just your family and friends. I mean, that's why I'm really passionate about wanting to help people beyond my reach – I want to sort of strengthen and, and reach out further and, and impact on more people and help more people. But um, our time is precious, so we have to be smart. And being smart is like you said, having those teams around us. Mm. You know, um, don't waste time trying to tough it out on, on your own. You can get through things a lot faster if you get some really good quality help to help you through. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Suzanne, I know that we can keep talking for hours. Um, I'm sorry that we don't, we don't live closer together, um, but this has been such an insightful session. I'm sure people take a lot away from this. Um, how can people get in touch with you? Okay, so they, um, they can get in touch with me. I'm on social media, um, so on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I, my, there's a clinic page on Facebook, the Good Health and Pain Relief Clinic on Facebook. 
Instagram's under my own name, so Suzanne McTier Brown. And I have my website, which is under my name too, so Suzanne McTier Brown .com. Um, And through that, they can contact me and look, you know, we can even do like a, a quick phone call and work out if we can work together, if I can help you. Um, because I'm very keen to help as many people as I can with physical or emotional pain. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, my recommendation would be um, reach out to Suzanne. Um, she's great at what she does. Don't fear the unknown in terms of maybe many of you listening to this have never heard of the concept of Bowen therapy before, especially if you're sitting over in LA at the moment and it's been created here in Australia and think, what the heck is this thing? Um, trust me, I've seen it work miracles on people where they they were told like my dad that surgery was the only option for them it's not the only option if it doesn't feel right it doesn't sound right to you then it's probably not right and so this is just a phone call away just a phone call away Suzanne I want to thank you so much for today it's been great to connect with you after so long and uh, just so grateful for our time together thanks so much thank you Rob thank you Alrighty.